Hello viewers, you're welcome to a fresh moment on Jay's Villa. On this special edition, I'm going to be talking about how Americans are receiving Iran's missile attack on Israel, especially as regards the coming U.S. presidential election. I believe you have in mind uh, the Iran launched, launched around 180 ballistic missiles at Israel on October 1 in retaliation for Israel's killing of the senior Hezbollah leaders, including Hassan Nasrallah. The missiles targeted Israel's military bases and infrastructure with Iran, claiming that 90% of the missiles successfully hit their targets. However, Israel's Iron Dome defense system, aided by U.S. naval force, intercepted most of the missiles. Now, before I go into giving you the reactions of Americans, I want you to listen to what Israel's prime minister said to the people of Iran. You may call it uh, an exhortation speech to Iranians. Let's have it. I speak a lot about the leaders of Iran. Yet at this pivotal moment, I want to address you, the people of Iran. I want to do so directly, without filters, without middlemen. Every day, you see a regime that subjugates you make fiery speeches about defending Lebanon, defending Gaza. Yet every day, that regime plunges our region deeper into darkness and deeper into war. Every day, their puppets are eliminated. Ask Muhammad Def, ask Nasrallah. There is nowhere in the Middle East Israel cannot reach. There is nowhere we will not go to protect our people and protect our country. With every passing moment, the regime is bringing you, the noble Persian people, closer to the abyss. The vast majority of Iranians know their regime doesn't care a whit about them. If it did care, if it cared about you, it would stop wasting billions of dollars on futile wars across the Middle East. It would start improving your lives. Imagine if all the vast money the regime wasted on nuclear weapons and foreign wars were invested in your children's education, in improving your health care, in building your nation's infrastructure, water, sewage, all the other things that you need. Imagine that. But you know one simple thing. Iran's tyrants don't care about your future, but you do. When Iran is finally free, and that moment will come a lot sooner than people think, everything will be different. Our two ancient peoples, the Jewish people and the Persian people, will finally be at peace. Our two countries, Israel and Iran, will be at peace. When that day comes, the terror network that the regime built in five continents will be bankrupt, dismantled, Iran will thrive as never before. Global investment, massive tourism, brilliant technological innovation based on the tremendous talents that exist inside Iran. Doesn't that sound better than endless poverty, repression and war? From Qom to Isfahan, from Shiraz to Tibriz, there are tens of millions of good and decent people with thousands of years of history behind them and a brilliant future ahead of them. Don't let a small group of fanatic theocrats crush your hopes and your dreams. You deserve better. Your children deserve better. The entire world deserves better. I know you don't support the rapists and murderers of Hamas and Hezbollah, but your leaders do. You deserve more. The people of Iran should know Israel stands with you. May we together know a future of prosperity and peace. Very sad indeed. Netanyahu was simply asking Iranians to protest against their leader's actions. And the reason for this is very simple. When the time of bombardment of Iran comes, the people will bear the brunt of war, just as you know, we've, we have in uh, Gaza. So now, having said this, the Iran's attack, which is wholly condemned by the West, is on the other hand viewed as a golden opportunity for politicians in the United States. As the U.S. presidential election draws nearer, the Republican supporters are using the Iran's attack to launch a big blow against Democrats. Let's have a look at some uh, commentaries. Uh, the first response I'm going to show you here is from Donald Trump the Republican candidate for presidency. Trump, you know, can talk anyhow. 
He boasted that his prediction about World War III was coming to pass. He's called President Biden and Vice President Harris, you know, stating that America currently had no president and vice president as well. The world right now is spiraling out of control. You might not have seen what's happened because it was a few hours ago. A lot of people were here. There's so many people outside, which we appreciate. But a lot of people were here a short time ago. Iran launched 181 ballistic missiles at Israel. And uh, we, we just, it's, I've been talking about World War III for a long time. And I don't want to make predictions because the predictions always come true. We're not going to make but they are very close to global catastrophe. We have a non-existent president and a non-existent vice president who should be in charge, but nobody knows what's going on. She was at a fundraiser in San Francisco, a city that she totally destroyed, by the way. It's, uh, San Francisco was the best city in the country maybe 20 years ago, and today you can't even, you can't even go there. You can't even live there. And I speak against myself because I own property there. I shouldn't be saying that. I should say it's the greatest place in the world. Let's sell my property. But I say it's, uh, I don't know, maybe it stages a comeback, but it's, it's literally uh, not livable. And 20 years ago, it was the best city in the country, probably one of the best cities anywhere in the world. But they, uh, you know, she was caught yesterday on an airplane staging a fake photo op. Did you see that with the telephone? The only problem is she didn't have the phone plugged in. You know, she was talking. <laughs> she's talking on the phone. The phone is not plugged in. She's talking like she's working. You know, I'm working so hard. Oh, boy, what a group. What a group. No one is in charge of our country, and it's not even clear. Uh, really, I mean, who, who's in charge between the two of them? You have a president, I guess. You have a vice president, I guess. She should have never been chosen because she never got any votes. Uh and then, Tim, Tim Scott, for Tim Scott, Iran knows Biden and Harris as weak. They have eased sanctions, sent money, and appeased the Iranians' regime. Now, on the issue of appeasing Iran, Trump spoke against that some time ago, criticizing Biden's government for offering Iran billions of U.S. dollars, which he claimed Iran used to enhance his arsenal. Take a listen. Crooked Joe Biden just agreed to pay a $6 billion ransom to the Iranian dictatorship in exchange for hostages. This is yet another Biden surrender and a further blistering humiliation of the United States of America to the world stage. But even worse, this decision will be extremely deadly. Biden is giving $6 billion to the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism. Just as when Obama sent the Iranian regime pallets of cash for hostages, in the dark of night, remember, plain loads of cash. Biden's ransom payment will be immediately used to stoke violence, bloodshed, and mayhem throughout the Middle East and all around the world, costing countless innocent lives, putting Israel, the United States, and the entire world in very grave peril. Now, moving forward, Christian Collins remarked, in 2020, Joe Biden said he would get us into war with Iran. Four years later, the Biden-Harris has, has us on the verge of World War III. Now, this video hasn't aged well, end of quote. All right, let's see the video of Biden say that. The world has changed because what Trump has done. And the American people, including independents and some Republicans, know how bad he is. No. In a similar vein, the Trump war room stated, Kamala Harris accused Trump's administration in 2019 of trying to start a war with Iran. Now, uh, let's have uh, the video of Harris Watts. He's tweeting out, you know, this bravado about, you know, lock, em, lock and loaded. What, the, what does that mean? Okay, and also... Well, it's an implicit military threat. The yes, US it is. Is going yes, to it is. We're going yes, to use it US is. Force. Yes, it is. And again, you know, listen, as far as I'm concerned, this, this president is, is motivated by his, his personal insecurities more than he is our national security. Mm -hmm. If this president is thinking about d d putting us in a position where we're in a war with Iran, the consequences will be absolutely unacceptable and, and, and tragic in terms of the young men and women who are American soldiers 
who would be sent and deployed into something that was completely avoidable. In a Harris administration, one, we wouldn't have gotten ourselves into this mess. I do not believe that the current president of the United States is working in the best interest of the people of this country. I, I have good reason, based on everything we know publicly, to suspect and to be concerned that his motivation is more out of self-interest than it is the interest of the American people. You know, I'm traveling our country and meeting with the families who are sending their sons and daughters to these endless wars. And this president better take very seriously any threat that he makes to enter us into another war and send our young men and women into battle. All right, let's move on. Gabriel Noronha, who tweeted, the missiles hitting Israel right now are the same ones Biden and Harris worked to lift US sanctions on the first month he took office. They said it would help promote diplomacy with Iran. Very sad indeed. Very sad indeed. That diplomacy seems to have gone awry. All right. Rob Smith tweeted and said, Iran attacking Israel is an example of 3,294 of things that wouldn't have happened under Trump. The White House needs him. And the world needs him. Who is running the country? End of quote. And finally, viewers, in the camp of Republicans, a new campaign ad has been cleverly crafted out to contemptuously depict Biden and Harris' inability to prevent escalation in the Middle East. Take a look. Like us, China also saw their weakness. So did Putin. Then he invaded Ukraine. Hamas saw Harris' anti-Israel statements and will use it as a green light to keep murdering Israelis. And Iran thinks Harris is so incompetent New intel shows they're trying to help Harris win the election. America doesn't need another TikTok performer. We need the strength that will protect us. I'm Donald J. Trump, and I approve this message. Hmm, very sad. The Republicans have really got a secure footing to launch political attacks on Democrats. I mean, we talk about the, the bloody war in the Middle East. We talk about the war in Ukraine. And we talk about the... The, a major issue in the United States, which is the issue of immigration. So this election is going to be so, so hot. We are watching intently and closely. And with that's all I have for you on this edition. If you like my videos, do not hesitate to hit the like button, uh, make your comments, uh, share my videos, and then subscribe to the Das Brothers to be there for more exciting information and stories. I remain Otra saying, bye-bye.